Hello everyone, and welcome to a new episode of The Moon Podcast. Here I will be talking about why critical thinking is important. I first came across critical thinking when I went to university, from 2005 to 2008. There was a subject called Critical and Cultural Studies. This is where we wrote essays with long word counts about culture, such as movies, books, TV shows, comic books and video games, etc., as well as their cultural impact on society, etc. The great thing about this was that every topic we chose, we had to make a PowerPoint presentation about our ideas and share our thoughts in front of the whole classroom and debate with our classmates. This is what's called a symposium. Before each symposium, I was nervous every time because public speaking wasn't my strong point and I didn't like looking like a fool in front of a lot of people. I had no confidence back then. I had to stand in front of the class and present my case. After each presentation was completed, this was when the class would ask questions and debate the validity of my thoughts and ideas. It was a nerve-wracking experience. On several occasions, I acted like a fool, thinking I knew it all. What youth doesn't? I felt like an idiot at first. There were times when I had to answer, I don't know, or I'm not sure about that, or I never thought of it that way. There were many questions being thrown at me, such as, where did you get that idea from? How did you come to that conclusion? Along with what if questions. But this was actually a good thing because this enabled me to do better research and change my views on many things. So, after I had my ideas challenged, I made a note of all the things I had to look up and expand my research, provide more evidence and see if I can find answers to all the questions that were put to me. We would take turns to do all this to our friends at uni. It was scary at first, but after a few attempts, it was fun. This is what enabled us to write better essays. We came out more informed than ever before. We became mentally resilient. As a result, today I am not the same person I was back then. I changed, I learned, I grew, and to this day, I am still learning. So, it is thanks to critical thinking that enabled me to think freely and explore different ideas, challenge myself and see things through other people's perspectives. We came out of university feeling confident, able to debate anyone without fear of being challenged. We didn't resort to name calling or immature defensiveness. We also learned to laugh at ourselves and live life without taking ourselves too seriously. We mentally grew up. The reason I started with this little anecdote is to prove how and why critical thinking is good for all of us. So, what is critical thinking? Critical thinking is about thinking and reflecting on ourselves. It is a process of self-assessment that challenges our own personal biases and assumptions. Critical thinking is about logical reasoning based on evidence to evaluate arguments and claims. Critical thinking requires seeking a diverse range of sources and to evaluate one's credibility. In order for critical thinking to work, it requires collaborating with others and engaging in constructive debates and discussions. Critical thinking is an ongoing process that requires active engagement and a willingness to learn. By developing and applying critical thinking skills, people can become more effective problem solvers and decision makers. There is no end to learning this. But what happens when someone doesn't practice critical thinking? What impact can a lack of critical thinking have on our mental health? There are terrible consequences. There is difficulty making informed decisions. When someone doesn't use logic or evaluate information objectively, they end up making decisions based on emotion or be influenced by external factors. When someone lacks critical thinking skills, they become ignorant, which makes them vulnerable to manipulation by others, such as advertisers, politicians, and propaganda of all kinds. When things are accepted at face value without question, this can lead individuals into traps of deception without even knowing there are alternative perspectives. Another skill obtained through critical thinking is problem solving. But if a person doesn't have critical thinking skills, they cannot solve any problems. They won't be able to spot any patterns or find any solutions. 
This leads people to create even more problems that they themselves cannot solve. Consequently, this can have negative long-term outcomes. If someone doesn't see their own biases, this prevents them from seeing other people's perspectives, which also prevents them from developing empathy. A lack of critical thinking skills leads to strengthening biases where people only choose information that only they agree with rather than address the flaws in their thinking. This leads to absurd, distorted views. This results in poor intellectual growth. Ignorance leads to intellectual stagnation and reduces mental health. By preventing one's self from seeking new knowledge, they end up relying on their own existing beliefs and assumptions. There are negative social consequences too. When someone lacks critical thinking skills, this means they also lack the ability to communicate effectively or argue properly in order to put forward one's own views. When someone lacks critical thinking skills, this prevents them from interacting with others properly. They end up struggling to articulate their ideas clearly. They struggle to argue their points with evidence, and they won't be able to engage in constructive dialogue with others. When all this comes together, when people lack critical thinking skills, they lack the growth they need to get anywhere in life. Worst still, they won't be able to do anything academic, get a job, or even pursue a career in anything. This is what happens when people lack critical thinking skills, and that's why it's important we prevent the negative consequences mentioned earlier from happening by making sure everyone has critical thinking skills. It gets worse. The end result is a reduction in IQ. There is a link between IQ, as in intelligence quotient, and critical thinking. People with higher IQ scores often demonstrate stronger critical thinking skills as they tend to have better cognitive abilities to process information, solve problems, and engage in analytical reasoning. However, it's important to note that critical thinking can be developed and improved through practice, education, and exposure to diverse perspectives regardless of one's IQ level. Now, I said earlier that critical thinking is an ongoing process that requires active engagement. Does that mean critical thinking is a learned behavior, or does it come naturally? If critical thinking came naturally, then there wouldn't be any ignorant people, and there wouldn't be any cognitive decline. Critical thinking involves various mental skills, such as observation, analysis, interpretation, reflection, being able to guess, explain things, solve problems, and make decisions. These are mental skills that can be improved through practice and application. If we don't use our minds, we will lose our minds. So, how can we stop this from happening? How can we get people to engage in critical thinking? How can we achieve a more informed society? The answer is simple. Education. This goes back to what I talked about in a previous video about why education is important. So, how do we implement critical thinking into education? For starters, students can be taught how to analyze arguments, evaluate evidence, identify biases, and make reasoned judgments. From here, we provide clear definitions, examples, and models to help students understand what critical thinking entails. Now, here are two key words I mentioned earlier, bias and assumption. Here are their Cambridge Dictionary definitions. Bias. Noun. 1. The action of supporting or opposing a particular person or thing in an unfair way because of allowing personal opinions to influence your judgment. 2. The fact of a collection of data containing more information that supports a particular opinion than you would expect to find if the collection had been made by chance. Assumption. Noun. Something that you accept as true without question or proof. So how do we overcome our personal biases and assumptions? This goes back to what I mentioned earlier regarding education. We can all learn critical thinking skills in and out of schools. So where do we begin? First of all, it requires self-awareness, open-mindedness, and a willingness 
to critically examine our own thoughts and beliefs. So where do we go from here? 1. We start by acknowledging our own biases. The chances are our biases are shaped by our own experiences and our upbringing. It helps to ask ourselves why you believe what you believe and whether there is evidence to support it. Consequently, these can shape our perspectives. The key here is to figure out what influenced our way of thinking in the first place. This brings me to my next point. 2. Question your assumptions and beliefs. Whenever you encounter a new idea or a piece of information, ask yourself why you believe what you believe and whether there is evidence to support it. Better yet, seek evidence for it, which brings to me the next step. 3. Actively seek a variety of different perspectives. This requires reading, such as books and articles, from various media sources. See what you can find. Try reading different blogs or listening to different podcasts. You become even more enlightened when you read books and articles from different cultural backgrounds. Once you have got all the information you need, analyze and evaluate information critically. See if you can find logical flaws, seek alternative explanations and weigh up the evidence objectively. That way, you can come to your own conclusions. Although this is something you can do all by yourself, I recommend having conversations with different people, expand your network, engage in discussions with people who have different opinions, also expose yourself to be challenged. 4. Speaking of being challenged, do not shy away from asking questions. Allow yourself to challenge others so that they can also think and reflect on themselves. You may be able to uncover gaps in their thinking that they are not even aware of. If not, better yet, listen to their answers and see where you can grow from there. Remember, we are human. We are all flawed. There is always room for improvement. 5. One thing that's beneficial about critical thinking is that you learn to practice empathy. When you put yourself in other people's positions, you begin to understand their perspectives better, and you may even understand the experiences that shaped their way of thinking. It gets better. Empathy enables you to develop a deeper appreciation for the complexity of issues and reduce the influence of biases and prejudices. 6. Beware of confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is the tendency to seek out information that confirms our existing beliefs while ignoring or dismissing contradictory evidence. This is an easy trap to fall into. Confirmation bias happens when a person favours the evidence that only confirms their own beliefs and undermines, or worse, dismisses completely, the evidence that could disprove it, therefore preventing themselves from seeking different perspectives in order to enable them to grow. Why? Because the more people emotionally invest into a misconception, the more deeply entrenched their beliefs will be. They are less likely to change their minds when confronted with contradictory evidence. Consequently, they end up tightening their grip on the misconception they possess. This is what's called the backfire effect. Not every person is open-minded. Even those who practice critical thinking can fall into this trap. This goes back to what I mentioned earlier about challenging our biases and assumptions. Ask yourself this. Are you selective about your sources? Are there bits of information you are leaving out? Is it on purpose? If so, this brings me to my next point. Challenge yourself regularly. Critical thinking is not a goal, it's a mindset, a lifestyle. Educate yourself on topics you are not familiar with, as well as things that interest you. You can increase your knowledge by reading books, attending lectures or workshops and courses, online and offline. Brainstorm your ideas, better yet, write them down, create a mind map. That way you can see what's missing and see where you need to take your journey on self-improvement. And finally, be patient. It takes time to acquire the right knowledge. Overcoming biases is a lifelong journey. Yes, it can be tough. It's normal to encounter setbacks along the way as long as you are patient with yourself and that you stay committed to the process of self-improvement, you will get better. These 
are all skills that I believe can be taught early in schools so that children can be well-informed adults when they grow up and continue flourishing as they get older. Now, you might be asking, but Must, you mentioned logic earlier. How does that relate to emotion? Do we not all make decisions based on emotion? Actually, logic is the opposite of emotion. Art and music is emotion-oriented, while logic is based on critical thinking. Critical thinking is a way of converting emotion into rational thought to help us make informed decisions and help solve problems. It's a learned behavior. This raises the question, is critical thinking the same as creativity? No. Art focuses on the right side of the brain, which focuses on emotion, while the left side of the brain focuses on logic. Critical thinking and creativity are two different ways of thinking that complement each other. The difference is simple. Critical thinking is about analyzing information in order to interpret whether information has any validity by being objective, while creativity is the ability to create new ideas. Creativity enables you to think outside the box to help you explore different options. Like I said, critical thinking and creativity are two parts of the brain that work in tandem with one another. For more information on this, I recommend you check out the study by Richard W. Paul and Linda, Linda Elder. It's called Critical Thinking, The Nature of Critical and Creative Thought. So, why is critical thinking important? It helps you grow mentally. It helps you rationalize your thoughts. It enables you to become a better human being by allowing you to think differently. I guess this is another reason why I created this podcast to challenge myself, to put myself out there and to be challenged. Unlike a symposium in a university, where there is a limited amount of space for people to sit and debate in, my voice, my podcast, is available for the whole world to hear, thus opening myself up to be scrutinised by everyone. At least that way, I come out mentally stronger than before, and, I say with hope, so do you. For those of you who have come this far, thank you for listening. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to me. I hope this has been enlightening to you. Take good care of yourselves.